Hey guys, so today I'm here with the Red Rock 4x4 cold air intake fitting all 2012 to 2018 JK Wranglers with the 3.6 liter V6 engine. So this is gonna be for the JK owners who are looking for a very easy and affordable way to upgrade to a cold air intake. Now anytime you're opening up airflow, whether it be your intake or your exhaust, you're gonna see some performance gains in horsepower and torque, but I would keep in mind that those are gonna be in the higher RPM range, and for us Jeep owners, we don't spend a lot of time there. So this is going to increase your throttle response, but you're really gonna feel it when you're in that higher RPM range, like when you're merging onto the highway and you gotta give it a little bit of extra gas. So when you're not in that higher RPM range, this is going to help you out with your MPG. Now, not only is it just going to improve your efficiency, it's also gonna give you a better sound underneath your hood, and it's also gonna give you a better look and a more aggressive look underneath your hood. So what I really like about this product is the simplicity of the design. So you have your large conical filter here. It's gonna be high flow, getting all that cold air into your intake, but it's also gonna be oiled and reusable, so it is going to last a very long time if you maintenance it. You also have this heat shield here that's going to keep all that hot engine bay air out, and then you have your large intake tube with no fuss and no frill, and I do really like that about this system. What I would like to mention is that I would recommend this to somebody in a drier climate. So because the filter is so exposed, if you are in a wetter climate or you are looking to do some water forging, I would stay away from this design. I would recommend taking a look at closed box options or any snorkel options. But if you are in a drier climate and you're looking for a very easy way to upgrade your intake system, this is a perfect option. So like I mentioned before, this is going to be very affordable at roughly $150. Now, like I said, this is a open box option. This only has a partial heat shield. So other more expensive options that you may be taking a look at are usually going to have a full heat shield that will completely protect the filter. They may be closed box options or they may be for snorkel options. So because of the simplicity of the product, that's why it's going to be pretty cost effective. However, that doesn't say anything about the performance. This is definitely gonna get the job done and it's gonna look really good while doing it. So install is gonna be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. This probably will take you about two hours to get installed with some basic hand tools. So speaking of the install, let's jump into that now. The tools that I used for my install were an impact wrench, a quarter inch drive ratchet, a three millimeter Allen key, an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 12 millimeter deep socket, a three inch extension, a 10 millimeter and seven millimeter open-ended wrench, a flathead screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and a pair of snips. So our first step to this install is getting our engine cover out of the way and this is just going to be held in by a couple of grommets so we can pop this up and get this out of the way. So what we're going to do first before we unbolt anything is make sure we take off our PCV hose as well as our IAT sensor. So your IAT sensor is going to be right below the intake tube near the throttle body. All you got to do is just press down the little tab and it will unplug. We'll get that out of the way. Then we can move to our hose over here. All we have to do for this is just pull back on the intake and wiggle it off. Put that out of the way for right now. Then we can loosen up our clamp on the throttle body. So our next step is to loosen up this clamp on the throttle body. I'm gonna be using an eight millimeter deep socket in my impact to do it just cause it's gonna be a little bit quicker, but you can also use a flathead screwdriver. Now you don't need to completely take the clamp off, you just have to loosen it. And then we can pop this off of our throttle body. Just gonna leave that right there for now. So your next step is gonna be to remove two bolts that are on the tabs on the front of your intake tube. Our clips underneath have broken from taking this off a bunch of times. So you will need a 10 millimeter socket to remove those and then you need to remove this hose on the front. But after everything is disconnected, what we can do is grab the front and the back of our intake, and we can go ahead and pop that out, considering the intake box is gonna be held in by grommets. So before we go ahead and install our new cold air intake, I did want to sit it on the table next to the factory one and give you guys a little bit more information about this and what benefits that you're gonna gain over the factory intake setup. 
Now starting off, your factory intake is going to be a closed box design, which is perfect for somebody in a wetter climate because it provides a little bit more protection to that filter inside. However, this is going to be an open box design or this is just going to have a heat shield in comparison to your factory setup. So this is going to seal to the hood, keeping all that hot engine bay air out. However, it's going to be a little bit less protected, but allow you a lot of cold air to get in and straight to your throttle body and your intake manifold. So this is going to have a high flow filter. It's going to be a pre-oiled filter, which is a big step up from your factory paper element. Your factory paper element, you're gonna to have to change a number of times because you're not able to clean it over time. But with this, this is pre-oiled, you can clean it and then re-oil it and use it for the lifespan of your Wrangler. Now this is also gonna be made of an aluminum construction with a nice textured black powder coat finish. So it's gonna give you a nice look underneath your hood, especially with the red filter, but this is going to allow a lot of heat dispersion underneath the hood with the aluminum construction. And it's also gonna have a straight through design. So if you can tell on our factory intake setup, you do have a resonator down at the bottom, which will trap some air and restrict a little bit of airflow. With this, you're not getting that. So you are increasing your efficiency with this new cold air intake setup. And increasing that efficiency is also gonna increase those gains that you may be looking for. Now this is also going to come with everything that you need in order to install it. It's going to come with all of the seals and all of the clamps that are going to be pretty high quality. So enough about these two side by side on the table. Let's go ahead and set up our new one so we can throw it in our Wrangler. So before we can install our intake on our Wrangler, we do have to put it together and we're going to start with the heat shield. So there is a bottom part of the heat shield and the side. What we're going to do is just stack this right on top of the bottom one here line up the holes and you're going to have six screws, six flat washers and six nuts here that we are going to connect this with. So once you have all of your hardware in, what we can do is tighten that down. So I'm going to be using a 3 millimeter Allen key and a 7 millimeter wrench. So what we can do now is install our seal. So I'm going to be starting with the upper seal. And all you have to do is just press that down over the metal. Make sure it just goes around that corner on the side and keep pressing down and then round this down to fold over the side. All right, so then we can put our seal where our tube and intake filter are going to sit. So it's going to be the same process and you may have to trim it so I'm going to grab a pair of snips So once you get it seated in place, now we are ready to transfer over our IAT sensor. So now we have to transfer over our intake air temperature sensor. So we have a little tab here where this has to go over. We can lift it up. I'm just doing that with a flathead screwdriver. Give it a little help and then we can twist it off. So you just wiggle it out. Then we can transfer it over to our new intake tube. There is going to be a pre-installed grommet on your intake tube. And what we can do is just take our IIT sensor and just kind of twist it down. So you want to make sure that the sensor is sitting with this tab facing forward. Um, if you're looking at the intake tube like this. This little tab is going to be facing down, but you really want to make sure that this is facing forward towards the intake tube. So before we can put our heat shield down on in into our engine bay, we do have to remove these two grommets down here as well as this eight millimeter bolt in the fan shroud. So I'm going to use an eight millimeter deep socket and a quarter inch drive ratchet to remove this. 
And this is gonna hold in part of our heat shield. So you wanna make sure that we hold on to this bolt because we will need it. And then we can grab a pair of pliers or you could use your fingers and we can remove these two grommets down at the bottom here. So I just grabbed a pair of pliers because it might be a little bit easier. Just going to pull up on those. So now what we can do is install our grommets with our provided bolts and all of our hardware onto our heat shield. So I'm gonna get, I'm going to use the smaller flat washer provided. We're gonna put that through our heat shield, grab our spacer. Then what we can do is put on our grommet. And then last but not least, we have a larger flat washer and a nut that we can screw onto the back of that bolt. So this is gonna make sure that our heat shield is spaced correctly and also that we can reuse our grommets to push it down on in. So I'm just gonna get this hand tight. You can give it a little bit of a tighten with a 10 millimeter socket and wrench. You just don't wanna squeeze the grommet too much and then we can do the same thing for the other hole over on the other side. So we can take our long bolt, small flat washer, send that through. Grab our spacer, grab our grommet, large flat washer, and then the flange nut. All right, now we're ready to pop in our heat shield. So now we can grab our heat shield and line up the tab with where we took out that fan trowel bolt. Line up our two grommets and we can give them a good press. So once the grommets are popped into place, what we can do is line up this tab with our shroud. We can take our eight millimeter socket and tighten this down into place. So now we can install our bushing mount. So we're gonna keep the bushing on the outer side of the heat shield. And we can put on a flat washer and thread on our flange nut here. So once that's on there, we can tighten that down with a 12 millimeter socket. Now we can install our intake tube. So what I did was put the silicone coupler down at the end with our two clamps just to get it ready for when we have to install it on our throttle body. But there is gonna be a tab down at the bottom of the intake tube on the heat shield side, and that's what's gonna sit on this bushing mount. So we are going to position this with our bolt. We can put our seal on our throttle body here. So now that our intake tube is sitting on that bushing mount, it may be difficult to see, but grab your flat, wa flat washer and your flange nut and we can secure that down. We can tighten it back up with that 12 millimeter socket. After that's tightened up, we can install our intake filter. Now we can install our filter, making sure that we have our clamp on. We can wiggle that onto our intake tube, make sure that it butts up against the heat shield. Then what I'm gonna do is tighten this up with my eight millimeter socket and my impact wrench. You could also use a flathead screwdriver. Now we can move back and attach our clamp on our PCV hose. So you do get a clamp provided in the kit. We're gonna slide that onto our hose, slide that onto our intake, and tighten down that hose clamp. I'm using the same eight millimeter socket. When tightening these down, I would recommend to keep them in a pretty convenient location, just in case you have to take them off in the future. All right, and we can move up to our throttle body. Now we can go ahead and tighten up our hose clamps, making sure that you have a good grip. Uh, on or a good space on your intake tube and your throttle body. I'm gonna be using the same eight millimeter socket. Then we can plug in our IAT sensor down at the bottom. So the last thing that we have to do is attach our coolant hose to our provided clamps. Now, like I told you guys, ours are stripped out, but I still grabbed a bolt off of another JK to show you how these attach. So you are gonna grab your clamp, this is pretty easy to manipulate, so you can just pull it apart, put the hose into place, crimp it back down, 
and then you can place it over that mount on your shroud. Grab the factory bolt and then you can put that down on through. Now, obviously, when you tighten it down with the 10 millimeter socket, it will completely clamp down. But like I said, underneath here, um, it is stripped out on RJK, but this is how it's going to um, basically attach. So same thing for the other side. You can just open up that clamp, squeeze that on down, put that on top and grab your bolt and bolt that into place. So before you go ahead and close up your hood, make sure that you pop your engine cover back into place. All right, and once that's sitting flat, then you're all set to go. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe, and for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.